sit for just a moment. So I congratulate you on your sanity, that you're out to worship the Lord God. That's the first thing. But even really more fundamental than that, of course, is that God is the foundation of creation. All these things are in the hand of God. It's a bit hysterical, the kind of panic. Obviously, we need to be serious. We wash our hands. We do all the things that are in the papers and on the news and everything else. But it's important that we remember uh, that this past week, actually, Bishop Gregory wrote to all the priests. And he asked us not to be changing things for the liturgy. He wanted to keep the even keel in a stability. Because last week also I had received an email that said, what are we going to do? They're closing the churches in France. And so I wrote back with a little smiley face, saying, we don't live in France. Now, of course, since I worked for a number of years in Geneva, I had also received an email earlier in conjunction, a different email, but coming about the same time as that other email of concern, from a woman who is French, and in the new parish that she's at, she had written me to tell me that her parish priest had canceled all masses until May 15th. There's no Easter, no Holy Week, I mean, May 15th. And so that's why it was very good that Bishop Gregory wrote, and you can find it on the Facebook site, apparently, of, for the eparchy. And it just says, we'll retain all of the practices that we have. The only one that may come up, we'll mention in a moment. It gives us occasion to speak about one of the parts of the liturgy. On the basis of Holy Communion, we don't change Holy Communion. As you know, I live as a hermit. So as far as if no one actually shows up on my doorstep with any kind of disease, I'm not getting sick. I don't do, I follow our Maronite hermetic tradition. I am out when you need blessings of houses or visits to the hospitals or for the sick or whatever. But other than that, I'm here. And the bishop said distinctly, because apparently someone found that in Lebanon, they've just simply changed the centuries and centuries old tradition of communion. And now they're giving communion in hand like the Latins in Lebanon. And this is horrifying. This is, not, this is not what we're doing and not what the bishop wants to be changed. The one thing that we will do, and that's what gives us the occasion to speak about, is that in the liturgy, we have what is the shlomo, the sign of peace. All of the Eucharists of the church have this. For the Latins, they do it just before communion, and everyone else does it before the offertory, the beginning of the anaphora. And of course, what the action is, and it's the same for the Latins, what it is not is a meet and greet. It's not the 4th of July picnic where you have to just be running all over the place saying hello to everybody. That's not. That's not what it is liturgically for the Latins e either. If you notice the beginning of the ceremony is peace to you, O Holy of our God, peace to the Holy Mysteries. It is the peace, the shlomo, that flows from the divine altar through the ministers into the body of Christ. And that's why the peace is not the turning around and saying hello to everyone. That you can do before and after mass. It's the distinct liturgical and Eucharistic spread of the peace of Christ which flows from the divine altar, which is why it's very beautiful in the Maronite tradition that we've kept it as being that chain which flows from person to person from the altar, which is why we've had the contact with the hands. The priest kisses the altar, from the altar it flows, it's given to the ministers, it's given to the servers, and then they go from row to row and what they're doing, and this is what we're supposed to be doing, this was meant for before a sermon this fall, 
But what we're doing is the server comes and he says, peace be to you. And the person receives it, says, and with your spirit. They don't say peace to you. You don't say both peace to one another at the same time because the one is bringing the peace from the divine altar to the one who's receiving and that person then turns to the person next to them and bows and says, peace be to you. And as we know, the hand gesture and then the hands that are placed on the outside and brought back. It's a very simple gesture. But it is the Eucharistic peace that flows from the divine lamb from the altar of forgiveness. Now, what we can do over the next few weeks, and Bishop Gregory mentions this, you don't have to actually do the physical hand touching in these next month, these next few weeks, which is fine. But it gives us the occasion to actually speak about what we're doing during the peace. Remember when I first arrived here, I watched somebody who kind of just put up peace signs to zing everybody in the area, which of course is not the gesture. So what the servers will do is when they come down to, the, down to the pews, they will bow and they will say, peace be to you. Bow at the same time and with your spirit, turn to the person next to you, just bow and say, peace be to you. We don't have to touch hands, we don't have to do anything else about that. And also to leave you with the last detail, I've told everyone who's on the altar along to join the priest to do the same thing, which I've always done for well over three decades, is before the Mass, you always thoroughly wash your hands. So we just tell you that now so that we don't have any panic or anything else going on. And I think that covers all of the ideas that we need for security and peace of mind for the next few weeks. So please stand and we'll continue now with our liturgy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful Father, you sent your only begotten Son, who by his life and parables taught us about your fatherly love. Make us worthy to celebrate today your great mercy as you revealed in the parable of the prodigal son who repented and returned to his father. Like him, bring us back from exile of sin to your fatherly house that we may glorify you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the merciful Father, who loves all people and accepts their repentance, and to the beloved Son, who became man, invited all people to his Father's house, and to the Holy Spirit, who enlightens our hearts and our consciences. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday, and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, you are the true light who has come into this world. You are the one that leads to the Father, and no one comes to the Father except through you. You showed us your love when you lived among us, and you told us of the Father's compassion and his love for repentant sinners. 
You spoke to us of repentance, of mercy, and of living water. Today we meditate on the parable of the prodigal son, who, trusting his father, turned from his life of corruption and repented of all his sin. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to have compassion upon us, as you have compassion on all sinners. May we humble ourselves before you and repent of all of our sins. Enlighten us that we may know you, strengthen us with your power, and do not turn your holy face away from us, lest the darkness of sin surround us. Send your Spirit to us sinners during this forgiving season of Lent, so that we may return to you seeking forgiveness. Open your blessed arms to us and bring us close to you, so that we may meet you with joy and find happiness in knowing you. Be our strength and our help that we may glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. God, accept our incense and the for, for the forgiveness of our sins. May those who have strayed from your fatherly house return there, that they may ask for pardon and forgiveness. As for us, your weak children, strengthen our resolve to remain with you, to glorify you forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat
I have sinned against heaven and before you said the Son, through my, though my heart now condemns me, you are greater than my heart. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I hope you will discover that we have not failed, but we pray to God that you may not do evil, not that we may appear to have passed the test, but that you may do what is right, even though it may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we rejoice when we are weak, but you are strong. What we pray for is your improvement. I am writing this while I am away, so that when I come I may not have to be severe in virtue of the authority that the Lord has given me to build up and not to tear down. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Praise be to God always. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Hallelujah. Praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. to the praise, glory, and honor of the most of the Trinity. Burn this incense. Do you this son. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks. The word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, a man had two sons, 
And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings, and he set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens, who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the husks on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him anything. Coming to his senses, he thought within himself, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, and here I am, dying of hunger. I shall get up, and I shall go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son, but treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. And so he got up, and he went back to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, he embraced him, and he kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals upon his feet, and take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a great feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and he has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and he asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, Your brother has returned, as your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. And he became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out, and he pleaded with him. And he said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I have served you, and not once have I disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when this your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. And he said to him in reply, My son, you are here with me always, and everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has returned to life again. He was lost and has been found. This is the truth, peace be with you. Father, give me a share of this property that falls to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
kind of horrifying to think about this statement, confronting your father and saying, all right, old man, you haven't died yet. Give me half of what I'm giving to you in the will. The offense behind it is not mentioned explicitly, but everybody who would have been standing there would have been absolutely horrified just at the beginning of the story. The offensiveness to go and say, look, give me what's mine, as if it actually belonged to him. And of course, in the whole story, when he winds up leaving and going out, it's a question, of course, in the parable of the soul returning to God, the individual, the person. In the bulletin this week, I've kind of gone into some more technicalities on the idea of what conversion is, what it means. You don't go anywhere physically. What is this return to God? So we talk about the purgative life. We talk about the illuminative stage of, of life. We talk about the unitive stage. And that's mostly the commentary on this parable, a little more in depth, that you can go back to and read over and again. Because if I just said it in the pulpit, it would be immediately forgotten. And just like, whatever. But on this question of movement, it is one of the points that I wanted to bring up. Bishop Gregory canceled the priest retreat, which was meant to be in two weeks. I had written last week, actually at the beginning of the week, uh, before everything broke loose. And I had asked him um, whether or not he would hold me excused from that retreat. Because the idea of traveling all the way down the East Coast through New York, which already has outbreaks, and down to Florida, which has outbreaks, didn't seem to be very reasonable to come back. I certainly did not want to be the first person that brought anything back into Maine. So in the meantime, of course, everything like knocked loose and then the bishop himself just simply, um, he, he just simply um, suppressed, canceled the retreat for this year. That was one of the points I wanted to bring up in the beginning. But on this whole notion of movement of the soul and of conversion, as we talked last week about the different ceremonies that we have, then when we talk about Lazarus Saturday and we talk about Shanini, we talk about Hosanna Sunday, Palm Sunday, that's technically the end of the fasting as far as the Lenten period because the Passion Week, the Great Week, is an entire season to itself considered to be separate. And so we finish with the children on, on Lazarus Saturday and on Palm Sunday. But in the evening of Palm Sunday, we have this ceremony that in English we call the coming into the harbor, Wa'ado Dal Nio. And this ceremony of the Wa'ado Dal Mino is translated by the coming into the harbor, but it actually has a, the Wa'ado is not strictly coming or arrival. It's like a rendezvous. It can also mean in the Syriac. And the notion behind it is that as we go through these weeks, and the first three weeks focus upon the healing aspect of Lent, what we look at in our lives, what we need to heal, what we need to bring remedy to by God's grace. This week, starting on Monday, we have over the next two weeks different liturgical readings for the daily Mass, which focuses upon our Lord's miracles, the fact that He is physician, and can divinely heal us. And remember that for the Syriac fathers, the whole notion of conversion and this transformation by grace is the return to paradise. It's a return to the state that humanity was meant to originally and did originally have in Adam and Eve. And we also have the image of being clothed again, clothed the new. St. Ephraim in his poetry often speaks about this garment that is given to us, this divine robe, this imperishable robe that's given to us. And you can see the scriptural foundations in it with the conversion of the prodigal son, being clothed, being washed, and being clothed anew in the ring and being shod again with his feet. And those are details which are given because it's telling you that when this young man is, goes through his conversion process, his idea is the people who work in my father's house, both the slaves and the hired hands, they all have enough food to eat. And they're servants. And I'm starving here. This is ridiculous. And that's why when he goes back, but if you notice in the parable, the father cuts him off. The father allows him to say what he's done wrong. I've offended God and I've offended you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But remember, the conclusion of his resolution is meant to see, just allow me to work as an employee here, Dad. And that'll be enough. 
to work among the servants. But you'll notice that as it's told that when he comes, his father cuts him off. He doesn't let him say the rest of it. And while he was, would get to that point of saying, allow me just to be among the servants, he says, you bring out. Bring out the best garments, bring out the ring, bring out this. And to shod his feet is telling us that the servants are barefoot. Servants are not shoed. Family members you shoe, they're expensive. And so when he's telling you he's being restored to his place within the family, he's not just coming back to the household as a whole. He's being restored to his place as originally intended. This is the notion for the Syriac fathers of the return to paradise. It's not just simply that we go away from our sins. We are meant to come back to a restoration of grace and of intimacy with the divine that Adam and Eve had in the beginning. And again, these are some of the things that we mentioned in the bulletin. And so since this entire season is focused really upon us and our conversion, through the miracles, through the question of our repentance, the next two weeks focusing on our Lord's healings. We then come to that last week when we focus just upon our Lord's passion and death. So it is the great week, it's just known as the great week or the great week of the passion. We also call it the holy week. And this week begins with the Laudo Dalmino, the arrival and the haven, the coming into the place of refuge. And oftentimes in our prayers, we refer to our Lord as being the port of security, the haven, the harbor. And so the notion is, is that after we've gone for the first three weeks of Lent, focusing really on the examination of conscience of where we are and what our lives have to become to be remedied, to be healed, and then to focus on the following two weeks that are now start on the fact of what our Lord does to heal us, we then arrive at that rendezvous in the point of security. And I've mentioned to you, when I was first coming and visiting with some of the Maronite, the other, the other priests, they were saying, oh, you know, the coming into the harbor, which many of them do on Tuesday, Monday night during the week. They said, well, it used to be it's supposed to be on Palm Sunday because it opens the Passion season. But for them, they were like, well, no one will do this because you're going to have them come to, mass to come to church twice on Sunday. Which, of course, the Maronites did all the time. Remember, throughout the centuries, it's a monastic movement. So you'd work in the fields during the day on Tuesday, and Tuesday evening, you'd go sing Sotoro. You'd sing the night office with the parish priests and the other people in the community. You lived monastically in that sense, and you had family and children and all that, but the parish lived, focused on the altar. And I thought, well, I certainly think people can do this. And so three years ago, we did this. Nuado Dalmino, we did on, th on Sunday night. And we had a nice little crowd that came. And then the last year, we did it again. And it was again a nice crowd, nice little crowd. So this year, we're going to do it again on Palm Sunday in the evening to open up the season of the Passion. The rest of the days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there will be the normal liturgies in the morning, which focus on our Lord's Passion. And the readings throughout the prayers focus upon the whole aspects, especially for the Syriac Fathers, of the types and anti-types, of the foreshadowing of the prophecies and the fulfillment in our Lord, of the Old Testament in the comparison with the New Testament. And someday when we're really exuberant and tough, we'll actually do those evening offices on Monday and on Tuesday evenings and sing Ramsho, sing the evening office. Then you'll know you really are Maronites then. But what we do in this ceremony for the coming into the harbor, because this year I'm trying to describe these different ceremonies that are coming up week by week, is that normally it begins with a candlelight procession because our Lord is the light of the world. And if this year, if the weather is good enough, we take our next step in observing the ceremonies. And if the weather is fine on the evening of Palm Sunday, we'll actually go out this door onto Appleton Street and process around to the front of the church. Because last year we just began in the vestibule because you enter into the harbor, it's part of the ceremony. And you knock with the processional cross on the doors which are closed. 
And so, but it's the light of Christ that leads us into that security of the harbor. And so, as I said, last year we just stood with the candles in the back. But if this year the weather is good, we'll actually go out and come around to the front. Because in the imagery of the harbor, the church, of course, is a bark. The church is a vessel. The church is the ship that brings us to the eternal life. But also, if you remember from the funeral masses, you make a reference in the incense ceremony over the, over the body of Mary being the new vessel. She is the new bark. She is the new ship that carries us to eternal life. And so the procession that comes in by knocking on the doors is the entrance into the harbor through these new vessels, which are both the church and, of course, the mother of God. And then there is a psalm of entrance and then the canonical hour, the front part that we have of the mass with the readings, the two readings. And that night is the gospel of the parable of the ten bridesmaids, the five wise and the five foolish, the five foolish who don't prepare their lamps waiting for the coming of the bridegroom. So the whole notion is of marriage, of security, and of the wisdom of preparing for that moment of judgment. It's a very simple ceremony, lasts about probably 45 minutes an hour. And it's a very beautiful way that then we open up to the contemplation of our Lord in his passion. As I've mentioned to you before, it's not because he dies that we are redeemed. It's because he embraces death freely that we are redeemed. And so when we follow in the footsteps, especially of the week of the Passion, it's to understand that our deaths become redemptive through our baptism and consecration because we too embrace that. It's an inevitability. We might as well give it reason and purpose. That's why I congratulate in the beginning on your sanity. You're here. And yes, none of us want to die. But we all understand by the light of Christ that there are, there are things of greater value than just simply terrestrial life. We're not foolish, we're meant to be wise, we're meant to take care of things seriously. But in the end, there is the light of Christ which is what we are actually here for and why we exist. And that is something that Lent is meant to pull us back to. And so that when we look at that whole instance going on these days, God has pulled off a wonderful coup because he's made all the planets stop and, be, and follow Lent. Think about your death. Think about your fragility. Think about your wounds. Think about illness. That's the whole meditation of Lent. And he's got everybody doing it. That's very wise. And so for us, we come to this point then that what we're doing is we desire for that moment to come and say, Father, I have sinned before heaven and I have sinned before you and I'm no longer able to be called your child. I've been unfaithful. But that's only the beginning. What we're waiting for is to hear the voice of the Father who says, bring out quickly the best robes. Garb him. Garb him. Put the ring on his finger. Shod his feet. Slaughter the fattened calf because now is the time for us to feast and to celebrate. And so, in the Wa'ado Dalamino, we stand with our candles and we wait for the day of the bridegroom returns, because our desire is to enter into the feast and the wedding banquet of the Lamb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Lord of men and became men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary and Saint Jude and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the repose of Edwin Lambs, and for the intentions of the Catholic Extension Society and its donors. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
continue on page 774, the Anaphora of St. Peter, 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim. sent your Son into the world, and he became flesh of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. And Sabalahma 
יאבל תלמידו כל ומורו, סבא חולם מהנה כל חור, ונו דן איתו, בחרו הודיע לה, תחלוף אייקון וחלוף סגיהם, מתחסה ומתיהם. חוסויון חווה וחוי על עלם עלמין. אמן. או קנו על כוסו דם זכרו מן חמרו ומן מאיו. ארך וקודש. אבל תלמידו כל אומר, סב אשתו מהנה כל חור, הוא נודן איתו, דמו דילן דיון תיקי חדותו, תחלוף אייקון וחלוף סגיה, מתי שרו מתיהם, חוסויון חומי וחוי, דן עלם עלמין. He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. remember your coming that saved us and as we await your second coming we offer you praise and ask you on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners do not condemn us because of our sins but have compassion and mercy upon us turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us for this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your father saying Have mercy on us, O mighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us. Awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Panin Murio, Manin Murio, Panin Murio, Nite Modro, Hokayo Kadisho, Onachena Lainu Alo Korabono, Hon Ho. since he may make the spread the body of Christ our God and make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God may those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life O Lord, accept our intercessions and our prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who are desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church, that you established on the solid rock of the true faith, and send your vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life. In a world of distractions, which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor, may those whom you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Tecla, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your holy gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Favor, remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers, and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. pleasing oblation, who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice, who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest, who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory. O God the Father, you strengthen and encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering. 
so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. With your only Son and your only Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving love. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to give you the glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you, for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Lord, 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 Thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good. Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross, be their shelter and refuge, and perfect, protect, perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So I'm sure there is an abundance of muffins downstairs this weekend, seeing the numbers. So you're more than, more than welcome and certainly heartily encouraged to go down for coffee and muffins following the liturgy. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings 
you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.